Helmholtz and I like to walk around a lot, and wireless IAMs are just very convenient. So when Sound Pete asked me if I'd review the Air Force, I jumped at the idea. Now I could put them up against my Sony C700Ns, which I like a lot, but I don't love them. At the time of this video, the Sonys are selling for about $87, and the Sound Pete's for about $67. There's an additional coupon if you use the link in the description, so now you know Sound Pete sent me these earbuds for review. Does that affect my opinion? Watch and judge and comment. In Bluetooth pairing with my Pixel 5a, the Sony shows battery life separately for the right and left earpieces. That's in the Google settings. But the Sound Pete only shows a single value on the phone. They do show separate values in the app, but I don't look at the app. So I decided only to play music through the right earpiece and basically discharge the battery and see what the Pixel 5a would return as the current level of charge. The result, it does take the lower value of the two earpieces. So if one's 20%, one's 100%, it's gonna show 20%. Now noise reduction, super important part of these wireless EEMs. Sony has two settings, off, and on. Soundpiece has three, off, normal, and A and C. Both had similar noise reduction when comparing normal mode in the Soundpiece to the Sony. If you've been paying close attention to my videos, as at Larry Aidman 76 has, there's often a background hum. It's not there now. Though Larry calls it a buzz, so tomato, tomato. The reason for this hum is my dad being so cheap he didn't want to spend 10K on a quality Sub-Zero fridge and only gave me 3K for a crappy Whirlpool. Both the Sony and the Soundpiece significantly lower the hum coming from the fridge, but in A and C mode, the Soundpiece 100% eliminated the hum. So while the viewer, you, will have to continue to suffer my dad's cheapness, I won't. Louder sounds like automobile traffic can be heard in A and C mode, but at significantly reduced volume much, much lower than the Sony's. It's a good thing that you can hear something though, for no other reason than safety on the street. Just as an example, the other day, I ran into while using A and C mode with the sound peats. I was crossing the street to talk to the nice ladies on the street corner who were looking to get out of the cold. Now you don't want to be walking unknowingly in front of a car, but be aware, those cars are very close. When they actually beep that horn, you're like, whoa. I didn't think you were that close and I didn't think I could just walk across the street without any problems. So look both ways in A and C mode. A and C mode has a power drain, which is significantly more than normal mode. At moderate volume levels, I only got about 95 minutes out of these. In normal mode, I got about two and a half hours. The Sony's have a significant edge in battery life and it's not even close. I can go all day with the Sony's in normal mode, getting around six to seven hours of use. And that's with noise cancellation on. EQ mode is very crude on these guys, but it's better than the Sony's, which is even more crude. The Sony's only have five settings, 400 hertz, one kilohertz, two and a half, 6.3 kilohertz, and 16. Plus something called clear bass, which has no value and has nothing to do with making bass clearer. Sony must think louder bass is clearer bass. Their EQ for this specifies nothing about what frequencies are affected using clear bass. So the sound piece Pete's has nine custom settings on their EQ. I still think it's crude, but 20 hertz, 100 hertz, 150 hertz, 320, 500, 800, 2.5 kilohertz, 5.5 kilohertz, and 12 kilohertz. The Sony can save Two settings, the Soundpiece can only save one. Soundpiece have something called adaptive EQ, which is more like a crude listening test, and I suggest you just skip it and go right with custom EQ instead. This was the closest I could get to my liking, but far from where I would like it. And why is there nothing over 12 kilohertz? The controls on the Soundpiece are capacitive. So if you're wearing hats or gloves, you can't answer the phone or do anything else until you get your fingers into direct contact. Also, there's a one and a half second hold time to skip a song, which I think is fraught with issues. Like if you're jogging and if your hand slips or if you just time it wrong, you end up doing the wrong thing. 
On the other hand, the Sonys have an actual physical button, which you can feel being pressed, which you don't need to have gloves on. Sound quality, they're not highly dynamic, but they are decently dynamic, so they're not the best, most dynamic headphones I've ever listened to. Music and voices sound natural. The mic is decent. Eh, that's stretching it. But my mom thought I sounded better on the Sonys than the Soundpeats. But that was because I was yelling at her while using the Soundpeats to stop picking up the damn phone so I could record myself on their answering machine. Anyone watching my videos who thinks I've got the greatest life in the world living with my parents should realize that while the grass is much greener on my side, there's still a few weeds in the lawn. This is my voice using the Sony CF700Ns. This is my voice using the Soundpeats Air Force. Bass was good, especially after EQ, as sound out of the box was a little boring and lacked weight. However, stated as stated earlier, the EQ is too limited and too broad, but better than Sony's. It's like using an axe when you want to use a scalpel. I still shake my head at products that have bass and tone controls when most EQs alone are too broad. How do people use such Neanderthal controls like bass and tone? Mid-range was very natural sounding. Listening to Gabriel Frey's Palais a Melini's Opus 80, I never felt wanting anything more. Highs were a little less grand, maybe because you couldn't EQ them past 12 kilohertz. Handel's organ concerto and B-flat, I couldn't EQ them quite to my liking. Either they sounded a little unnaturally high, as some reviewers would incorrectly say detailed, or simply too dull. I didn't want and won't but want to bother EQing them using my computer, because that's where I use wired headphones. These are designed for the phone, and I'm going to use the tools they give me for the phone as I would expect 99% of my viewers to do as well. Overall, I found the sound to be acceptable. Sound alone would warrant a rating in the red range of wines and slightly better than the Sony sounded. So the sound is decent to good, the price is relatively low, and the sound piece are winners. Mm, they're not. What so many companies miss out on is what does Apple do to succeed? It's not just a simple, elegant design coupled with good engineering. It's also the understanding of the total user experience. And that takes time to really test and see how users interact with your product. The Soundpeats Air 4 case is a disaster. For one, adding my favorite ear tips to these, which right now are on the Sony's. The case won't shut. Because they're slightly larger in depth. And then the Soundpeats doesn't charge. Notice how the case doesn't fully shut with my favorite ear tips in. And just a shout out, I got these ear tips from watching one of the best YouTube reviewers out there, Camify. Camify also reviewed the Soundpeat Air 4s as well. So you can check out his review as well. I'll put links in the description for both these little guys and the Air Force. So lack of play in the case is a serious issue, a problem the Sony does not have. The case also doesn't show if you're in charging mode or not. It'll blink for a second if you catch it at that moment. But you aren't sure. And when you're wrong, even if you do see it, because if we just showed you, if the case doesn't shut all the way, you're not charging. Case's other issue is that it's not quick to take the ear pieces out of your ear and just drop them in. You want to go the wrong direction because the holes are in the center. Your instinct is to take them out of your ear, this is the right one, and just put them in. And I know I'm not the only one with this issue because I'll show you what Camify was doing in his review. <laughs> he didn't want to talk about it. He just sped up the video so he wouldn't bore you with the 12 minutes it takes to figure out you're doing something wrong and they have to go in that way. To further prove this case design sucks, the new Apple AirPod Pro cases have reversed their case design to do it the right way, like that. When you're giving up sound quality for the convenience of wireless, these inconvenient issues make you want to run back to wired IEMs. Second issue with the case is powering the units on when you want to use them. It's a little bit annoying. The Sonys automatically turn on when you remove them from the case. And they turn off when you go back in. By the time the Sonys are in your ears, they're connected to your phone and you're ready to use. The sound piece, on the other hand, turn on when you open the case. So by the time you actually take the earbud out, 
they're already on. They're already connected. And when you're starting to put them in your ears, you're starting to push this capacitive button on the back. So you start skipping songs or making it louder. All very annoying items. So because the sound peats get connected before you put them in your ear and you're touching the capacitive controls, I really hate that. It should turn on when you physically pull them out of the case, not when the case opens up. So my final opinion is that even though they sound as good, slightly better than the Sony's, have a better EQ than the Sony's, cost less than the Sony's, I actually prefer the Sony's because of the physical button, significantly longer battery life, and the better on off design. I would probably overcome all of these issues with the sound peats if it wasn't for the lack of play in this case. Because not only do my favorite ear tips not work in the case, I couldn't find any ear tips that came with the sound peats that fit my ear properly. So for me, the Sony's a better choice simply because I can't put my favorite ear tips on and charge them. Now I'm not gonna take them off every single time I use them to charge them, open them up, put them back on. It's what a pain in the butt. Overall rating for the Sound Peat Air Force then drops to a Chardonnay. And because of the case is so bad, it's a yellowtail Chardonnay. So thank you for watching this edition of the Scientific Audio File. Please subscribe, like, and comment on this video. I'll see you next time.